Hello, and welcome to It Just Makes Sense, Order Delivery with the 220A Olfactometer. I'm your host, Chris Rand, product consultant here at Aurora Scientific, and today I'd like to delve into our updated order delivery system by first providing an overview of what we would be covering today, which will be followed up with an in-depth video about integral components and functions that make this such a versatile system. So let's give you an idea of what I will be covering and what you can hope to get out of this TechCast. First off, I will describe how the 228 olfactometer works with particular attention on the functionality provided by the mass flow controllers, front panel connections, and solenoid valves that are used to control gas flow. Next, I will discuss the modification and configuration of the system by walking through initial setup and how to add, remove, or replace components, including add-on modules. Finally, I'll walk through the olfactometer control software, paying particular importance to vial configuration, generation, of sequences and ultimately executing order delivery. Before we get into setting up the system and using it, we first need to go over what components make up the olfactometer and what role they play. One of the most important parts of the system are the mass flow controllers. I'll talk about why there are three, what they do, and how they are controlled. There are three mass flow controllers in the control box. The first is a 1000 SCCM unit at the top, which is the exhaust line. This is clean air flow that exits the back and is matched to the send flow to minimize pressure changes. The second 1000 SCCM MFC is located underneath and represents the dilution flow through the valve manifold that mixes with the odor stream. Lastly is the 100 SCCM MFC at the bottom that flows into a specified vial and generates odorant. This is then mixed with the dilution line at the mixing valve prior to being released at the final valve. Now that we've discussed what's inside the box, let's focus on all those front and back panel connections and how you can utilize them to their full potential. Looking at the front panel, you'll see the air in push fitting to connect your clean air source. Below that are your BNC connections, first of which is DIO1, an input that takes an external TTL signal to trigger the start of a sequence written in the 220A control software. Beside that, DIO2, which is an output configurable by the user to generate a sequence sync out or vial status signal. Below that is final valve trigger in, which takes an externally delivered TTL signal to trigger the opening or closing of the final valve where high opens the valve and flows the odor into the animal and low closes the valve and flows the odor to exhaust. Next to it is final valve sync out, which generates a signal corresponding to the final valve status where high is open and low is closed. Control of the olfactometer is done via an Ethernet cable connected to the LAN port here. The front panel power switch turns the unit on and the power LED will illuminate, indicating that the unit is now powered. Looking at the back of the unit, you can see the push fitting for the exhaust air out which connects to the mixing valve manifold via Teflon tubing. The monitor signal's DIN connector is included for external hardware that have this connection. Lastly is the power cable fitting to plug into your lab's outlet. You may have noticed numerous green LED indicators on the front panel. What do they mean and why are there so many? When the power switch is turned on, the power LED will illuminate. Above that are LEDs that indicate odor and flow status. The animal light is on when odor is delivered to the animal. Purge illuminates when purging the system of odorant by opening all valves. Odor LED is on when an odor vial has been selected and in use. And lastly, your flow on LED will illuminate when air is flowing through the system. Next to these are your vial LEDs, which indicate what vial is currently being used. There are up to 16 odorants that can be used with the system. Each column represents a set of four vials, corresponding to each model of olfactometer. The base unit of four, plus a series of add-on modules to expand to eight, 12, or 16 total. Moving away from the control box and into the valve manifold, let's take a look at the solenoid valves, what role they play in the system, and where they are located. From the odor MFC, air flows into the vial manifold to four solenoid valves, each one corresponding to a single vial in the order in which they are mounted. One, two, three, four. When the vial valve opens, air flows into the vial containing the odorant. The air flows down the longer tube, which generates headspace within the vial. The shorter tube then picks up the odorant created in this headspace. 
Once the odorant is picked up, it travels into the dilution flow and then finally down to the mixing valve. The dilution and odor streams mix together as they flow to the mixing valve. When there, they create the desired concentration percentage following the odor stabilization delay. Once the stabilization delay is reached, the mixing valve opens and odor flows to the scent port of the manifold. The scent port and air port both flow to the final valve where they terminate using inert fittings. This fast switching solenoid valve consists of two outputs. The first is the exhaust, which is where the odorant would flow until delivered to the animal. The second is animal, whereby the clean air connection would enter the final valve and constantly be delivered to the animal until odorant is delivered. The flow rates between these two outputs would be matched, mitigating pressure changes during odor delivery.